What's up YouTube? It's Father's Day and today I'll show you how to make this tool pouch. Now I would have loved to have this video up on Saturday but here in Omaha we had a huge storm on Friday night and it knocked out our power here until Saturday night. The joys of living in the country. So with fingers crossed I'll have this video up on Sunday. Just in time for Father's Day anyway. Now right now I have wrenches in this tool pouch but you could also put knives or just any kind of tool that you want. To use it, you just fold it over the flap, roll it up, and tie it off with these ribbons. I'll show you how fast and easy it is to whip up next. Alright guys, so the things that you're going to need to make this tool pouch, tool caddy, tool roll up, whatever you want to call it, are about three quarters of a yard to even up to a yard of this canvasy, plasticky material. I got this at Walmart and it's kind of shiny and flat on one side and then it's like a backpack material on the front here. You're also going to need some bias tape. I have a quarter inch wide double fold bias tape right in this package and half inch wide double fold bias tape right here. And of course I'm using black but I think these would look cute in a different color also. You're going to need two pieces of ribbon that measure 14 inches long. You're also going to need something to mark that will show up on our black fabric here. You could use a pencil, chalk, I'm going to use this white color pencil. You're going to need your sewing machine with coordinating thread. And you're also going to need some sort of paper to make the template. I'm just going to use freezer paper here because that's what I have down here in the sewing room. But you could use that brown paper or even tape some computer paper together. So let's get started. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and make the pattern. So out of this piece of freezer paper, I'm going to cut out a rectangle that's 13 and a quarter by 15 and a quarter. Just like this. And now you just want to decide what the top is going to be and what the bottom. The bottom sides will be the 13 and a quarter, and the sides will be the 15 and a quarter. So I'm just going to mark this as my top and this as my bottom. Now you just want to take something round, and I'm going to round off three of these corners, leaving one of the bottom ones at a 90 degree angle. So I'm just going to take my glitter here, match it up on the corner, and round them off. Now using your scissors, just cut off those angles. Now you just want to set this off to the side for just one minute. And this time we're going to cut out a rectangle that measures 13 and a quarter by 8 and 3 quarters inches. So it should look something like this. And this is going to be our pocket piece. So the same corner at the bottom here that we rounded off on our top piece here, you want to round off that same corner here on your pocket. And just cut it off. Now on the opposite side of where we just rounded our corner, we're going to measure up four and three quarters inches and make a mark. Then with our ruler here, we're going to match up this top corner with that mark. Just like that and cut it off. And now you should have two pattern pieces. This is going to be the body of our tool bag here. And we want to lay this so that the wrong side of the fabric is facing up. So I'm just going to remind myself here, wrong side up. And we're also going to need to put one more mark here on our body piece. And that's for the placement of our ribbon. So I'm going to measure up seven inches. And right around here will be where we place our ribbon. Now for our pocket piece here, we want our fabric to be facing up, so right 
side, up. So now, you just want to go ahead and cut out your pieces from your fabric, making sure that the body piece is wrong side facing up. So that will be the shiny flat side right here. And for your pocket piece, you want the right sides facing up. That's the textured side. Now usually with this freezer paper, you can go ahead and iron it down to the fabric with the waxy side facing down, and it'll stick. I'm not so sure how well it will work on this. So I'm just going to put a couple weights here, and with my rotary cutter, I'm going to cut it out. So now you should have the back piece with the wrong side facing up, and our pocket piece with the right sides facing up. And you can kind of see how it's going to go together here. So now I'm just going to take my pocket piece. I cut off a chunk of my quarter inch bias binding long enough to go along the top of our pocket here. Now if you've never used bias binding before, it always has one side that's a little longer than the other side. So what I like to do is open up the shorter side, just like that, flip my pocket over, and I'm going to line up this edge right along the top of my pocket here. I'm then going to take this over to my sewing machine, and I'm going to sew right in that crease there. I find it very helpful to use some wonder clips. Now I'll meet you over at the sewing machine, and we'll sew this down. All right, guys, so this is probably going to be pretty hard to see here, because it's black on black on black. But I have my sewing machine set up for a straight stitch. My length is a two. And I'm just going to sew right in that crease, attaching my bias binding. And like I said, I like to attach it to the back first. And don't forget to back stitch. Alright guys, so then I just like to fold the bias binding to the front here. I'm going to clip off any extra tails I have. So now using a zigzag stitch, I'm just going to zig and zag this bias binding onto the front. And I'm going to use a pretty small zigzag stitch. And I'm just going to line up this edge of the bias binding with the center of my presser foot. So I'm going to keep my length at about a 2 and my width at a three. Just like that. All right, guys, so now you want to take your body piece here. And like I said, my pretty side is facing down. Then you want to take your pocket piece, and you want the pretty side facing up. All right, guys, now you may notice that this is facing a different direction than the one I previously just showed you. And that's because I made a goof. When I was making a couple swap outs for this video, so it doesn't take me all day, I did not have my body piece facing down. Therefore, I had to flip this all the way around to get it going the right direction. But I think it will turn out just fine. Just make sure when you cut out your pieces from the patterns we made that the body piece is facing down and the pocket piece is facing up. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to divide this pocket into some sections. So you want to grab some sort of marking utensil, chalk, pencil. I'm going to be using a white color pencil. And starting from the small end of the bag, we're going to measure over one and three quarters inches and make a mark. I just like to line up one of these marks on my ruler with the straight edge of the bag. I'm going to measure over one and three quarters inches and with my colored pencil make a mark. Then from that mark I'm going to go over one and a half inches and make another mark.
From that mark, I'm going to measure over one and a half inches again. Make a mark. From that mark, I'm going to measure over one and three quarters of an inch. From that mark, I'm going to measure over two inches. And from that two inch mark, I'm going to measure over two and a quarter inches. Just like that. So it should go one and three quarters one and a half, one and a half, one and three quarters, two inches, two and a quarter inches, and this one right here, which actually measures two and a quarter. So now I just like to clip the pocket to the bag here with these wonder clips, just to make sure nothing moves on me. Now I'm gonna take this back over to my sewing machine, and with a straight stitch, I'm going to go ahead and stitch down all of these lines, and that's going to divide up our pocket for our tools. Now, I like to start at the bottom here and back stitch, and I'm going to sew all the way up to the bias binding. I actually sew onto the bias binding and back stitch three or four times right there because that's going to be a stress point when you're putting your tools, your wrenches, your screwdrivers in and out of these pockets. So, we'll go over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how it's done. All right guys, so I'm gonna backstitch at the beginning, and like I said, three or four times down here at the end by the bias binding, and I'm just gonna sew down each of these lines. Just like that. So now you just want to break your thread and move on down to the next line. All right, guys, so now I have all the slots here sewn into my pocket and my pocket attached to the body here. All right, guys, so our tool pouch is almost done here. So the next thing that we're going to do is find the placement for our ribbon. When we made our pattern, I told you guys to measure up 7 inches on the 90-degree angle corner here and make a mark. So that's exactly what I did right here. And I'm going to actually transfer that mark onto the back also. So now we're just going to attach our half inch bias binding the same way we attached our quarter inch binding here. So I like to start at the back. I'm going to start right here. You can see here's my mark for my ribbon. So now I'm going to open up the short side to my half inch bias binding and you're going to want to start right here at this 90 degree angle. You can see right here is the mark for my ribbon. So I'm going to line that up and put a clip. Now when I get to my mark for my ribbon, I'm going to lay my bias binding over that and also my two pieces of ribbon. Matching up the sides of the ribbon with the sides of our pouch here and put a clip. So now I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew this on exactly like I did with the quarter inch bias binding and I'm going to stitch right here in the crease making sure to go over my ribbon and keep on going. When you get to the corner you just want to go really slow. I like to take a few stitches, bend my bias binding, take a few more stitches and bend the bias binding. The great thing about bias binding is that it has a little stretch to it. So I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. All right guys, so I have my bias binding here sewed on. And when you stop, you wanna stop with your bias binding right at the edge here on the corner. You don't wanna go any farther onto this bias binding where we started and just clip it off. All right guys, so now you just wanna fold your bias binding over to the front here. 
All right, guys, so our final step is, once you have your bias binding all folded over, we're going to take this back to our sewing machine, and using that zigzag stitch that we use to attach the front of our binding to the pocket, we're going to use that to attach our front of the binding to the body. You want to start right down here at the corner. You want to backstitch at the beginning and the end, and just zigzag stitch all the way around. All right, guys, I have my sewing machine set up for a zigzag stitch. My length is still a 2, and my width is at a 3. So I'm just going to line up this bias binding with the middle of my presser foot here as best I can. And just zigzag. Don't forget to backstitch. When you get to the corner here, you can see it's laying pretty flat, but just go slow and ease it around the curve. Alright guys, I'm coming up to my ribbon here. And I like to go ahead and backstitch at my ribbon and then go forward just for extra security. Now just finish your seam. Alright guys, so now our tool pouch is basically done. The last thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and take my pinking shears and just snip the ends of the ribbon to prevent any fraying. Now you can see here, I decided to put some wrenches in this one. And it works perfect for that. So to use this, all you got to do is fold this flap down, roll it up, and using our straps here, tie it together. Now you can just throw this in the back of your truck, in your car, and away you go. But you don't have to just use this for wrenches. I've also had one of these in mother's vehicle, and we have screwdrivers, a couple wrenches, a small little hammer, and it makes the perfect little tool kit for the vehicle, or for your camper, or anything like that. I've also given this to my uncle for Christmas, and he puts his hunting knives in them. So there are many, many uses for this little tool pouch, not just for tools. Now this makes a perfect Father's Day gift, of course, but since Papa got the boot, and he don't talk to me, I'll have to give this to one of my dad friends. But it just doesn't have to be for Father's Day. This makes the perfect manly gift for any time of the year, for any occasion. I hope you give this project a try. If you like this project and want to see more of my projects, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about this video, or any of my other videos, or would just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Feel free to share this video across your social medias. And as always, thanks for watching. Happy Father's Day, and I'll see you next time.